We are all here today uh, to celebrate a connected world. And what I want to do now is take you to a different part of the world that I've seen in the last two years. That world is completely disconnected. And I'm going to do that with the story of my very special friend. This is Zaya. Zaya is 16 years old. She lives in the outskirts in a small town in Mongolia. She's an orphan, and from the age of seven, she's been living in this place called Lotus Children's Center. Zaya is a very special girl because she's an inspiration to all the kids in her center. But just like Zaya, there are millions of children in orphanages and in slums and street children who don't even have a roof on top of their head. What's common among all of them, though, is that they lack access to good quality education. And I had done a lot of travels uh, in five, six years. And seeing this problem, I figured, let me take a year off to see why they have this problem. Now, I live in San Francisco, and it's the heart of the Silicon Valley. And in 2010, I noticed that there was this education revolution happening in online learning. And what I wanted to see was all these billions of dollars that are getting pumped in to these amazing online tools, content, how is that reaching the last mile? These communities around the world that don't have access to internet. Now, every tool that is built today is based on certain assumptions. You might have heard the term cloud a lot. So everything is built on the cloud because it's easy for engineers and educators to put up a tool there. They make assumptions that everyone is going to have fast internet connectivity to actually stream content or use. We also make assumptions that everyone's going to have new devices. And internet is cheap, really. I pay $50 a month to access internet on my phone. Now put that in context with the developing world. Is that really cheap or free? The question that I had in mind was how is this education revolution going to affect Zaya? So I set out on my journey. Um, I started off in Indonesia. I spent some time in orphanages over there. I went to Mongolia, and this is me in Indonesia, Mongolia, and the last TED Talk that I did. If you notice, I've gained a lot of weight, and that's what education does to you. <laughs> <laughs> but what I found, what I did find was that no matter where I went in this world, there were schools like this where there was no internet connectivity. And we, living in Silicon Valley or in the developed world, are getting hyped up about this bubble and online revolution. Right? So I, I, I did a lot of research, and I tried to find out, had people tried to solve this last mile issue in the past? And you know, I did find solutions. Like, I'm sure all of you have heard about these cute little green laptops called OLPCs. Let me tell you, when I was in Mongolia, I saw over hundreds of them collecting dust not being used. And I went around asking teachers what was the reason. Most of them had nothing new coming into those devices. They were disconnected from the internet world. And teachers had no training for themselves to continue using it beyond the one month that they were given this laptop. Now, you see these numbers up here. What's startling to me is not that we have 78% penetration in you know, America and only 11% in Asia or Africa. What amazes me is that it's taken us 10 years from the internet bubble in, in the developed world for us to reach 11% in Africa. Now, if you translate this to education, which is happening right now, 
is it okay for us to wait 10 years for, each, for it to reach the same number for the rest of the world? And that just seemed unnecessary and unacceptable to me. So being a software engineer by profession uh, and having a keen interest in education, my challenge was how do we convert a school like this into a 21st century learning center? Now, the first thing we needed, of course, is internet. But there's no way to get internet here. So I started geeking out a little bit, and I'm going to do that now with you guys. <laughs> um, I said, what's the one cool application that we all use right now which needs internet, but also we need not be online all the time? And that's Dropbox. Right? How many of you are familiar with Dropbox? And you, you realize that you don't need to be online to use your files, right? So I take Dropbox, and now I had to serve education content to over 50 kids at a time in a classroom. So what do you do next? I said, let's put a wireless router around it, OK? So you can access it on mobile phones, over tablets, over these OLPC laptops, and even on age-old desktop computers. Now the next thing is I couldn't just serve files to children and figure out you know, how they're going to learn and give them interactivity. So I think the what was needed was some sort of intelligence that a learning management system provides. So we built a little bit of intelligence into this box. The fourth challenge was power. Most of these regions, forget internet, didn't have even electricity. So every hour there would be a power failure and the teacher had nothing to teach. So we said, let's strap in a battery pack into this. And what I came up with after almost a year of learning on the field was I can take the cloud into the classroom. So you have this box. I call it Nomad Edu. It's a small box, just like an iPhone. It creates a wireless cloud anywhere in the world. You don't need to have internet access. Uh, children can learn math, science, any sort of subjects through it. And a teacher or a facilitator or a volunteer can take it back home or to the nearest city once a month, once a week, and update new content that's needed, and also upload students' data back to us. And that way we know how kids are learning, and we can push selective content back to that community. So we tried this out. Um, we tried it in Mongolia, and I tried it in India. And you can see the same school that I showed you a few slides ago, is now a learning center. These kids are using 10-year-old computers, which honestly, I don't know how they work, to learn <laughs> math from Khan Academy. <laughs> but while I solved the problem of access, there was a still bigger challenge. And that's why I figured OLPC had failed. Which is, we are all. Oh. We've all taken out the teacher in this equation. While we think online learning is going to change how kids learn, teachers are the most important component that we completely neglect. And especially in developing countries where children need leaders and insp inspiration. Teachers are the CEOs for them. You know, it's like you put 10 software engineers in a room. They don't know what to build unless there's someone telling them what to do. So you can give all the content in the world, the best tools to these children, but unless there's someone leading them, they're not going to learn. So we figured, how can I do some teacher training on the same platform? So we started putting teacher training modules through it. And the first case for our pilot was Zaya again. And let's hear her talk. When I was seven year, years old with my brother, it is really cool that without internet, we can access Khan Academy through Hotspot. After getting involved in teacher class project, lots of children in my orphanage now interested in it benefit lots of children in my orphanage. 
when I started translating those sutras, I realized that many other children who benefit from it, it made me want it more. I want to study journalism. I will try to go to abroad. So this was Zaya. Um, if you noticed, she mentioned she started translating a lot of lessons. And this is the part that I talked about was inspiring them to become leaders in their community. Zaya has translated over 300 lessons uh, from Khan Academy that are now being used by children in her orphanage and other orphanages in Mongolia. Um, and it's not just Zaya. Here's Renu, she's a 22-year-old graduate from the Indian education system who on paper had a computer science degree but did not know how to even use a projector and was not com com comfortable with it. Over the last six months, she has now become one of the most tech-savvy person in her school. And she is inspiring all the children not just to consume education content through this, but also to create it. And a very interesting program that we just pushed through our boxes is called SMILE, and we are doing this in conjunction with Stanford. And what SMILE does is allows children to create quizzes for other children in the class and not just take tests. And you see one of the guys there in the specs, he had a very interesting quote. His name is Devang, and he said, I like watching videos and answer questions on Smile because I feel like the answers to all the questions are in the story. Isn't that obvious to all of us? But in an education system where I grew up, where everything is on road-based learning, these things don't exist. We grew to now over 14 centers we are operating in Indonesia, Mongolia, and India. And in Indonesia, um, one of our champions is a man named Aris. He was a bartender for a couple of years in Jakarta, but wanted to help kids through education and did not know how to bring online learning and Khan Academy to his center. So two months ago, we did a pilot in Indonesia. And now Aris wants to put biking and road safety lessons on the same box to teach his community and not just use it for math and science. My goal through all of this now is to get a million children connected who are today part of a very disconnected world. I want to get 5,000 teachers trained and certified so they can become ambassadors in their community as education technology consultants. I want to end this talk with a, very, a song that is very personal to me. It says, it's from Pink Floyd, and it says, and then one day you'll find 10 years of God behind you, no one told you when to run, you missed the starting gun. It has an interesting meaning to it. We don't have to wait 10 years for online revolution to impact us here in the developed world to finally take it to these places, to these kids who really need it. The starting gun happened two years ago. And there are ways, like the solution we have, to empower and impact these children right now. We don't have to wait. Thank you.